Hello, hello, hello. It's another beautiful week. It is the day that the Lord has made and he said we should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy to be here with you again this week. Can you believe it? It's the 30th day of November, of October already. My God, it's only it can only be God, it can only be God, and I just want to say, Be thou exalted to the Lord God Almighty for great things that He has done, what He's doing, what is yet to do in our lives individually and collectively. It's only by His grace we are who we are. So, you are welcome, dear viewers, and um, to MCB Real Life Talk Show where transformation healing and the blessing abound. We say, Be thou exalted again to the Lord God Most High. We hallow His name. For great things that he has done, what he's doing, what is yet to do. For counting us worthy to be among the living, we are most grateful. We are most grateful. And one thing I want to let you know and to share with you on this platform is that um, I declare I, I declare that Jesus is Lord because I know that he's the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, the ruler of all rulers, and the wisdom of the wise. Also, we have an anchor on this show, taken from Psalm 107, 1 and 2. It said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endures forever. The B part says, let the redeem of the Lord tell their stories, whom oh, he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. You know, um, it's, I don't know how to say this, but I just want you to know that the Lord is with you because he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. There are so many battles that we face daily, night and day, and it is only by his grace we are alive. So one of the psalmists said, where we, in one of the psalms, he said, if the law had not been on your side, when enemy rose up against you, they would have swallowed you alive. And sometimes I meditate on this. I say, that is the truth. The enemy doesn't even want to see us, exist, especially if you are a child of glory. They just want to pluck that pluck the person away. But by God's grace, they will not be able. They will not. The Bible said, when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of God will raise a standard against them. And I declare that upon your life this evening in Jesus' name. We are all be redeemed from all evil. You know, and that's why we come here to testify, to give God all the glory, honor and adoration, to glorify God, to exalt God for great things that he has done in our life, to encourage you, our viewers out there, and of course, to shame the devil because the thing they have they have overcome, but the Lord, you know, make and expose them in Jesus' name. Praise God. Today, it's another day. You know, every one of us has got a story. I don't know if you've got a story and you want to share your story to testify, to glorify the Lord God. Almighty. Just get in touch with me, you know, get in touch with me, um, inbox me on Facebook. And I'm going to, you, I'll put on my email address later. Or you know of a story that you want to share with people. We are just here to encourage people, to empower people, to inspire people. And to tell them, you know what, they are not alone. And that's the truth. You are not alone. You know, God is with us. You know, one with God is a majority. You are not alone. And that issue with you, it's not particular to you. There's somebody else going through that particular problem at this very particular moment. And of course, God wants you to go through it and so that you'll be a blessing to others. Unfortunately, that is it. There is no thing we can say about that. We cannot ask God questions. But when maybe when you see God, you can ask him, why do I have to go through what I went through? But he gave you, remember that he gave you that grace. Like he told them, um, Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And may the grace of the Lord be sufficient for you today in Jesus' name. Please help me to invite family and friends to watch with you. Because today's story is going to is very inspirational and it's going to be a blessing to people out there. And of course, I'm Carol Baba Life. You don't know who is speaking, you know. <laughs> I'm Carol Baba Life. And before we go into the show of today, in two weeks' time, just two weeks' time, I'll be having my event. I'll be having my show. I just want to use this opportunity to invite you 
to a date with Christ. Do you know that? A date with the king of all kings, the ruler of all rulers, the wisdom of the wise. I really appreciate it if you can come on this day. And we're going to discuss about custom design to fit a specific a specific purpose for such a time as this. That means you are created for, for a reason. You are, I mean, most of us don't know. We say we know, we know, but we're not acting it. Come and hear what God has got in stock for you. It's only 65, 70 pounds. Early bird, I mean, the early bird is gone now. <laughs> it's 70 pounds. Come and, you know, connect. Meet with your creator, you know, meet with other people, like my people. And believe me, your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Today, we're going to talk about surviving abandonment. Abandonment. Hmm. Probably some of you have experienced that. We know it's very painful. It could be as a child, you were abandoned by your parents, by your mom, by your dad, by your sibling. It could be in marriages. It happens anywhere. And it can be very, very painful. You know, it has its own kind of grief trauma. It has a trauma. You know, but I don't want to talk so much about it tonight on my side. I'm going to invite my guest on this show you know she will be able to tell you more on this she's no other person than you know she, i call them beautiful brave and bold woman of substance i've known her for quite a while now and you know sometimes you meet somebody on the in in your in your journey of life and you think um they said be, be kind to people the people you meet when you are you know going up you never know where you can meet that person again this is one of that person uh, people that i knew over 10 years or so ago and just from you know one way or the other we uh, part cross again so you can imagine if i was not good to her or she wasn't good to me you know what will happen so that's why it's good to be good god bless you she's minister flora coca you know she's got a bs on in pharma uh, informatical science she's a pharmacist independent independent prescriber flora is an award-winning senior pharmacist who is passionate about giving back to the community this passion and great desire to help and give back to others is a gift and calling that flora believes is her god-given calling and purpose her two main areas of interest are education and health and that's the, I think is one of the the two best areas that you should you know have actually have interest in life. As a result, she founded Encapulate Healthcare Solutions, an organization with a vision of contributing to and improving healthcare provision in Nigeria and Africa as a whole, with a focus on the area of wound management and public health awareness. Encap Encap is it Encapsulate Healthcare Solution runs in two programs, Heal the Wounds and Own Your Own Health. Please help me to welcome Flora Coca on this show. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Carroll. Good evening, Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on today. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for thank coming. You so much. And hello to all the viewers. <laughs> God bless you. And you too. And all right. Too. Please introduce yourself to us. Who is Flora Coca? And tell us about your upbringing, please. Wow, Flora Coca is one of four and the only girl. Wow. Born, born, <laughs> Born in Lagos, Nigeria. Yes, up Niger. Uh, born in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, some would say to a kind of silver spoon, as it were. Went to, you know, one of the best schools in Lagos for primary school and secondary school. Um, I'm a blue sister. I went to Queen's College in Nigeria. And then I came here in my mid-teens to go to school. And then also did my both my university degrees here in the UK. So that's a very short summary of who I am. I when I was younger I had many things I wanted desires what many things I wanted to achieve. I wanted to be a chef. I've always wanted to be a pharmacist definitely. I also wanted to be a part-time hairdresser. <laughs> All those things I wanted to do but the only one the main passion I had was definitely 
being a pharmacist because I've always loved and had that uh, innate passion to help people. But I, for some reason, I always wanted to be a pharmacist and I believe that's what God wanted me to do from time. It didn't go smoothly, but eventually I got there. Wow. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you see, child to hold dreams do hold come to pass. Absolutely. And that's why the personal developers will tell you, you know, um, what is that thing that you were dreaming when you were young? Most people, they forget their childhood dreams. Mm. They pursue other things in life. And it's not easy to come by. You just said, you said it wasn't easy, but you go there. Can you mm. please take us to, through that journey of okay. becoming a pharmacist? Of becoming a pharmacist. Right. Okay. So, um, did my GCSEs and around then started doing my A levels. Around the time of my A levels, there was some family crisis, and so I had to, you know, change schools and move around. And eventually, when my A level results came out, they were not good at all. In fact, I didn't get any, and it was a complete disaster. And I thought to myself, What am I going to do? I want to do pharmacy, and there's no way. I'm going to get into pharmacy with no A levels. So I had to reposition myself. And this is where I believe that, you know, then I wasn't a Christian and I believe that God was with me and directing me and ordering my steps. Um, so here I am with, you know, no A levels. And I thought, okay, what am I going to do? I went through clearing. I was looking at different courses. I saw um, one of the universities in London were offering chemistry. Chemistry is one of my favorite subjects. And I thought, okay, fine. Let me see if I can get into chemistry. And then from there, I, maybe after the first year, I can move to pharmacy. You know, so there and then, you know, when things are not going right, you're already, you, it's not wallowing and sitting there and thinking, oh my, oh my, what are you going to do? How are you going to move forward? How are you going to turn around? What is the solution? You know, and God gave me again, now, you know, when you look about it and you reflect like God was working. God gave me favor with the admissions guy. He said, you know what, no problem. You start with the first year. If, you're do, if you do well in the first year, we'll move you to the honors degree which i did and i and i you know i got my chemistry degree and again at that time i kept applying for pharmacy i did not give up i kept applying i kept applying finally my third year i got an interview um i got an interview with one of the universities which my friend had actually arranged but you know again god was working there because if i had gone to the other university i might not have been able to do it because they had a lot of uh, elements that i was not were not my strengths I got another interview with one of the other universities in London, and I didn't want to leave London at that time. And again, God gave me favor, and the gentleman was like, "Listen, you get this grade, and you can get in." And it's one of the you know top uni top universities for pharmacy, and that's how I got in. I got the grade, and that's how I got into pharmacy. So the dream was kept, still kept alive. Um, you see, because you have your why, that yes. keeps you going. It keeps you going. It keeps you going. We must have a why in our life. Why? Why do you want to, you know, do something? When you have a reason behind everything, you'll be sh you'll be shocked how that why will push you to your yeah. destiny. And one thing I got from that, you say you failed your A levels. Yes. You know, failing is not doesn't mean that you are a failure. Absolutely. You know, some people, when they feel, they will be there. Say, Please, you have to speak to some people out there. There are people, you know, who are young that have failed their A-levels and they think that's the end of lives, you know. Oh, how come my friend have gone? What did you do? How did you survive that? Please speak to a child, a young person out there that have failed their GCSE or they failed their A-level and they think that's the end of life. Please. Oh, uh, failing your A-levels or failing your GCSE is definitely not the end of life. In fact, you are, you are learning an important life lesson that you will fail, actually, at some things. You will not always succeed. And if you do not fail, you will not learn. You will not move forward. You will not be, become resilient and you will not be stronger. Failing my A-levels, as I said, I did not... Yes, I was very upset. It really hurt. It was a shock. However, there was something in me, and I think perhaps that's, again, that's a gift from God. There's, there was some strength. I said, no, 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 no. I need to get, I need to, get to this pharmacy. How am I going to get there? Okay, I didn't even think, oh, gosh, it's going to take me forever. It's going to, no. What is the solution? How am I going to move forward? What am I going to do? Research. That pharmacy, what can I do? If I don't get the A-levels, is there another way for me to get in? Some people do access courses instead. Some, may, you may need to repeat the GCSE. You may need to repeat the A-levels. Certainly. You know, your own time is your own time. You cannot run your life on other people's time. They have their own destiny. They have their own path. 
you need to run your own path. And it would seem that was my path. I'm not saying, you know, GCSE failing and you should do that. But if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. It's a, it's it's picking yourself up, dusting yourself up, re-strategizing and see how can we break through this? How can we move forward? And you would come out better for it by doing that. So yes, I wouldn't say it's not definitely not the end of the world. It actually opens more opportunities for you to explore that you might not have thought of before. Well done. That's a good one. Everybody have their own time. Yeah. And then you add more experience. You yes. are more experienced when you feel at, at something. By the time you go back, you you are you you know you have more knowledge, you know, than somebody who's trying it for the first time. And that is the truth. Like yes. you say, you find your way around it. What are those things that you have to do? It could be in examination, it could be in anything at all in life that mm -hmm. you have filled. Just look around, what can I do mm -hmm. that will make it better next time? You keep trying, I keep trying, I keep trying. And by God's yes. grace, you get to your destined destination. Absolutely. And one thing you mentioned earlier again is about God always be with me. Although you were not a born again Christian, yes. although you were not even, were you a Christian at that time? Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you just know that there was something that was helping you, pushing you, encouraging you, and it's always been. And that is the Lord that we serve. He's yes. always there for us, and He's always. always with us. You know, yes. when you recognize it, now you are more appreciative. So, okay, there must be somebody or something called God that's been helping me in all this. Yes. So, whatever it is that you're going through in life, it doesn't matter what it is, there is a God out there. All you yes. need to do is to call Him. Because he knows he's going to use it in future. Absolutely. All right. So yes. he will surely come, you know, and rescue you wherever it yes. is that it's going on. Yes. He will yes. help you. Is it? I mean, funny enough, in time of funny, trouble. Yes. Funny enough, the the song I woke up with this morning in my spirit was "Call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved." And I was like, Holy Spirit, why is that song coming to me? But maybe it's for someone today. You know, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Call upon him. He is there. He's waiting for you to reach out for him. Well, call to me in time of trouble. He said, I yes. will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for that. Awesome. Awesome. And next question. <laughs> At what age did you get married? Oh, Lord. <laughs> A very young age. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> A very, very long, well. young, very, young very, very, very young age. <laughs> My mother Let got me... married when she was 15. She had no, when she was no, no, it wasn't that young. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, how old was I? Early 20s. That's not young for some That's people. No, well, now, now, for now. I was young. 20, 21? Yeah, early 20s, between 21 and 23. And how was it? How was it? Because obviously you were experienced then. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I said it was very, very young. <laughs> <laughs> With everything I that know I know some now, people, yes. they get married because they think they are lonely. Some people they get married in a kind of way to run away from parents. Mm. You know, they think, okay, when I get married to my boyfriend, things are going to be better. Mm. Meanwhile, that's not the reason why you should get married. No, you must be matured enough for marriage Absolutely. before you go into marriage. I mean. Please speak to women, young girls out there that are thinking of running away from home. They don't want to use marriage as a way of escape. Oh, absolutely not. I would not advise you to use that because marriage itself is not a bed of roses. It's a lot of hard work. And escaping your parents, marriage, marriage to escape your parents, <laughs> it's uh, no, not a good idea at all. Um, for me, it wasn't the case. For me, I got married because I was crazy in love, actually. And... Uh, I just saw it as the next uh, natural step, not really thinking about it. Again, at that time, as I, I wasn't yet uh, a born again Christian, so it wasn't like uh, I was grounded or had had any guidance in that area. But I just thought, well, you know, maybe it was from the movies or whatever. You get in love, the next thing you do is get married. But yes, I was crazy in love um, when when we when we got married. But I wouldn't advise anyone to <laughs> you know, running away from an issue, running away from a problem. I think marriage is the answer. It's not necessarily so, no. What you're going to find there is a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment, and you need to, as you've said, you need to be mature, you need to be grounded. Can you handle the issues that are going to come? Because you just don't know what issues will come. But what you can guarantee is that issues will definitely come. Definitely. And how will you be able to handle it? Yes. Definitely. And that's why you have to be matured enough to go into that business called marriage. 
Yes. You know, yes. I, they say it's the only institution you go to, you get certificate before you even go through the examination. <laughs> yes. <absolutely. laughs> God bless you know, us. Or, or, or as my, one of my, my pastors used to say, you know, um, love is blind, marriage is an eye opener, you know? <laughs> it is, of course it is. And because you just said it, you were madly in love. Oh, yes. Was the other guy in love? You yes, don't know. yes. Oh, yes. You no, know? no, I know. I know. You know. Oh, well. I, at the time, I yes. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, I'm not, we're not talking to you or talking about you. Now I'm talking about somebody else. It's yes. only you you should know about. Yes, absolutely. You know, you know about you. You were really in love. You thought the next thing to do was to marry. And you mm -hmm. did. I bet there's mm -hmm. much more be, I, you know, um, after just signing the paper or living together, like you said, there's yes. much harder work to do. Yes, when it comes indeed. to that marriage and the Lord will help us in Jesus name Amen. all right another question today we're talking about abandonment yes survivor of mm -hmm. abandonment mm -hmm. how did you come about that we know abandon you say abandons wood deep and is invisible mm. that's one thing that is very very invisible it talks and pulls making it hard to let go always acting beneath the surface spilling Premier fears into moments of disconnection, disappointment, loss, generating generating feelings of insecurity, low self-esteem, doubt that persists persist into future relationship. So tell us about this abandonment. How did you come about it? So the abandonment, when did that occur? It 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 started when um I was pregnant with my first child. And during the pregnancy, all of a sudden, he says he, he's not, you know, interested anymore. And um, at that time, we were, we were planning to, you know, do the necessary things, you know, go to Nigeria, do the, you know, the traditional stuff and all that. Anyway, and he said he was not interested anymore. This had happened. He had gone. He had traveled and come back. And he was just like, I'm not interested. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, I was pregnant at the time. This dragged on, you know, he said he was going to leave. This dragged on throughout my pregnancy. And eventually, when I, when our son was born, he was still around then. But at, when our son was 11 months, that's when he left. That's when he left. Um, many people tried to intervene and find out what was going on. And the funny thing was, just before he decided he had... He said he when well, I was pregnant and he said he was gonna leave. He had just become born again. And by this time he, I was he has, yeah. So I had become born again, you know, in the process of it all. And he he had I'd been praying for him for years. His friends and I were praying, and eventually it had happened. But then he traveled, came back. I don't know what happened, and he's like, I ain't doing this no more. And uh, you know, the and then all you know, drama broke loose. I don't want to say how all the drama, you know, broke loose. Here I am pregnant through the pregnancy. People trying to intervene, trying to talk to him, the pastors, our pastors, and this and that. But well, he was not listening to anyone. He was not listening to even his family tried to intervene. You know, his mom called me one day. I said, I know exactly what's happened. I said, you don't need to tell me I know. Because the Holy Spirit has told me exactly what, why and what is happening. You know, it was the issue of a strange woman. So, but I did, you know, when my son was 11 months, he left. So here I was, just me and this 11-month-old baby. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Thank goodness by this time I had, was, had qualified as a pharmacist and I was working. Now, I'm going to say to you ladies, this is why it's good for you to get your education and make sure you are working and earning and you are educating and you're standing on your own two feet. You do not rely on any human being except God. You only rely on God, no human being. Now, if I had not been working, that was some help. It was still very difficult because going through the grief of the of the abandonment of the breakdown in the relationship and having to mentally know that I needed to stay strong for the for the child as yeah. well. Um, I work in a then I was working and I still do work in a psychiatric hospital and I know exactly the effects of some of these things that can happen because some people everybody's different and things affect people in different way. People react yeah. to things in different way and different situations, and I have seen people who have been through breakdowns. I act, they were, you know, I've actually seen a, somebody who was in there because of a broken heart. Was so I can, he was in, he was in, you know, he admitted because of a broken heart, breakdown in relationship. And that's how he described it. His heart is broken. 
So I've seen the effect of how situations can affect people in life uh, in terms of mental health. And, you know, that was foremost in my mind. And I really thank God for God that I was a Christian at that time and had become a Christian at that time because I had to run into God and I, there was no plan B. It was God or nothing. He was the one going to sustain me and my son. And, you know, God is absolutely awesome. He has been ex more than faithful. Um, yes, it was not easy. Many nights of crying, many nights of screaming. My friends who were there for me know uh, the nights of screaming. Some of them, their husbands would complain that this woman is calling again, screaming and crying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. but they didn't understand. They didn't understand the grief. I was trying to understand the whole situation. And mm -hmm. of course, you have family members trying to get involved. This one had so many, so much noise, so much noise around mm -hmm. that time because, you know, that you're too young to be going through this kind of thing. What is this? What is this? What is this? You know, um, so fending for for me and my son, but I just thank God also that my family was around. They were there to help in terms, you know, had to go to work in terms of childcare, just different bits of whenever they needed help. God always sends help. He said he's our very present help in the time of trouble. And he was very present using different people, different ways, provision, protection. He was very, very present. Even when I'm screaming and crying at God, what is going on? Why is this happening? What did I do? I didn't know. I wasn't a Christian when we married. Da, da, da. You know, I'm there complaining and it's just like my child, you know, embracing me. You know, when he says that he sent his, he sent his word and he healed them. Many, he many them times. More destruction. Oh, yes. He would send people with the word to comfort me, to heal me, to strengthen me, to keep me going at each time because you know i was like this is not the plan i had for my life i don't want my children to have different son what is what's this you know is this child going to grow up without their father this is not what i wanted god you know and each time it was his birthday or anything i'd just be like god you need to take care of this child this child this child did not ask to be put in this situation how is it going to work out for him you know you know you hear the statistics outside about oh you know children that grew up in a solo parenting house and this and that. And, you know, I was like, God, you will not put me to shame because I am serving you and you alone. You are my God. You said you love me. You said you take care of me. You will always be with me. You know, um, Psalm 3 verse 3, he's the glory and he's my shield and the glory and the lifter up of my head. Mm -hmm. That has been very true for me. Psalm 124 is also lift up your head, O ye gates. Every gate had to be lifted up. The king mm -hmm. of glory stepped into the situation, situation continually, he never left. He never, ever left. Even times when I thought, God, you are not speaking. What is happening? When well, he was speaking, he was always speaking. Somehow. He was like, God is always speaking. I will have no day to that is when I lost my house, you know, and um, I was crying, I crying. I can't hear God. I can't hear God. You know, that's the most people. And, you know, I know God is speaking, but I wasn't listening. Yeah. You know, it's because you're crying, you're, you know, you're, you're filled with emotions yes. and it's just, oh, what would people say? What would people say? I'm mm -hmm. sure that was consume, you know, when you are going through such situation, you're not thinking of what, what's God saying is what would people say? You know, yes. when you're going through emotions and say, oh my God. And then God is telling you, listen, I'm there with you. I'm for you. You yes. just know yes. that. Yes. We thank God. We thank yes. God for what He's been. If you what you've been through, it makes yeah. you a better person today. Absolutely, it makes you a better Absolutely. person. Absolutely. Um, the question I want to ask, like the, the question I want to ask is: When you were left alone to pick up the pieces of a beloved relationship, what do you do? And and what about your self worth? How did you rebuild your self esteem that helped you to become the best version of God for your life? Again, what I will say is um, the only person that can help you to do that is God. And you have to ensure that you have your, uh, develop your relationship, your intimacy with God, because it's him that would heal you emotionally. You know, we talk about deliverance, talk about different healing physically, but there's the, he the emotional healing that needs to take place with, from the trauma that has occurred from this abandonment and so on. So picking up the pieces was fully to rely on God, on his word, worship and praise. I love worship and that helped me a lot with minister mm. to me. healing emotionally. I didn't know that was a thing until I went through it, you know? Um, so definitely picking up the pieces involves you. As I always say, I said to one of my friends, you run into God and you hold on to him like no man's business. There is no plan B. It's me and God, nothing 
nothing else absolutely nothing else so picking up the pieces for me i haven't i wasn't always someone who had self esteem issues i would say so that wasn't that wasn't too much of an issue for me um i, I just turned it into being confident in god because i stood on his word you know he said cast away not your confidence for he has a great great compass of reward my confidence i turned that into the confidence in god that you know i had the confidence that god god is going to sort it out i never actually for once thought you know this guy will not is not going to come back i actually believed that he would that this was just something just warfare temporary. yeah this was temporary and so on and so forth you know and yeah so i just turned my confidence into god i i guess what helped me was because i was not newly born again but relatively new so you know that hunger that drive and that desire and that passion you have for god initially mm -hmm. which we should carry on but you know that helped me a lot to try and refocus my mind and i was very particular that nobody well that's my mantra that nobody born of a woman is going to make me lose my mind you know but picking up the pieces, everybody will have their own method. But I think the number one key is to ensure that you are standing on the word of God, reading is what developing your relationship with God, because he's the one that will keep you. He's the one that will guide you. He's the one that will protect your mind, your spirit, your soul, send you the help and walk you through this valley. You know, he says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of the dead, I will fear, you know, no, no evil. You know, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That mm -hmm. is exactly what will happen. So in order to help you put those pieces together, as it were, you need to be in God, on God, left, right, and center, back to front, up, upside down, as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, I just wanted to say something. What you're saying is that um, love God, go all out, but you have to be intentional. Yes. You've got your own part to play mm -hmm. in this um in this journey what at what time did you accept and acknowledge that separation or the, the abandonment oh because some people you know some women they don't like you said you made mention of it you say you pray that he's going to come back you believe that no woman will be able yes. to take him away from yes. you at what yes. time did you accept this and acknowledge you say you know what i have to work on myself and you know continue this journey alone i remember the day clearly uh, a friend of mine and a pastor friend of mine came to speak to me. And this is what they, you know, they said, listen, I don't know whether they had been speaking to him. I don't know whether he had come to speak to them, but I think he had been speaking to my friend who he was, who was a guy. And they said to me, listen, yes, we're believing that this may happen, but while you are believing and while you're waiting, work on yourself. So the analogy they gave me was, it's like you buy a piece of land, you know? When you come back, it will increase in value. So that's how it will be that when he comes back, if he comes back, you would have increased in value. So you were not in the same spot because he left. No, no, no. You have increased in value. And that was the day. And I thought, I didn't accept it. I was really upset. I was like, what in the world are these people talking about? What are you talking about increasing in value? I've tried to. <laughs> but that day, switched the reality hits you. Again, it had hit me, but <laughs> it hit me again that yeah, I'm more valuable. I mean, he had tried once or twice to play games and you know come back. I said, No, 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 you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna come back through the back door. When you left, you left through the front door. If you really want to come back the way you're supposed to, you will come back through the front door. Go and get your family and do it properly. You're not gonna come through the back door, you know. So, and then again, you know, found out that you know, whoever he was with was pregnant and all those kind of you know. But it was that day, that analogy of the land. I've never forgotten that. You know, that you will increase in value. So increase your value. Even if it's not for the person, but for yourself. And even if it's not for yourself, for the God that has created you. You're not supposed to be static. Increase your value. Work on yourself and keep going. That's a good one. I actually spoke on uh, one show this evening. That's one thing I said. And um, increase your value. Invest. Rediscover yourself. Know who you are. Who did God create you to be? Because sometimes you are in a relationship. You are so consuming that relationship that you forget who you are. Mm -hmm. It's all about the other person, about family, about my children, about my husband, mm -hmm. my husband, my husband. You forget about you, not knowing That's that, it. you know, God created you for himself, for his glory. And by the time that person goes, sometimes God 
I'm going to say this. I am the one saying this, not the Bible. Sometimes God will intentionally allow things to happen so that you will come back to him and you'll Absolutely. be the best person or best version of who God wants you to be. Yes. Yes, you know, absolutely. because you haven't got time for yourself for who you are. Some yes. people think when they're married, that adds to their value, but that's not true. No, your value is in God. Yes, it's an addition, it's you know, it's, it's a process of life, an addition, but you have to become, you know, who God has created you to be. Some absolutely. people think when they get married, you know, they are free. No, no. there's no freedom in marriage. <laughs> no. It could be the opposite in most cases, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. there are a lot of things you have to know for yourself. I was looking, I was listening to one guy today. He said, listen, don't say, oh, you're going to marry. And they what are you bringing into this marriage? Absolutely. What are you bringing? 100, not 50, 50, he said. Mm -hmm. I wish I thought about it. I said, that's true. The typical Nigerian mentality is that, well, the moment you get married, he's going to take care of you. He's going to mm -hmm. pay the bills. He's going to mm -hmm. do this. These days, men will say, no, 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 no. I don't want to marry a liability. And the, mm -hmm. the one that friend told you was the best, the, the best, the truth, and not about the truth. Invest Absolutely. in yourself. If you are in such a, a condition at this very moment, please invest in yourself. If you need to go back to school, go back to school. Yes. If you need to, you know, um, do anything at all. You want to do uh, trading, you want to do business, please do it and do the best. Like I said in my speech this afternoon, I said the best revenge is success, living well, oh, yes. moving on. I love it. Yes, the best revenge the is success. The best revenge is oh, success. Yes. Be successful in whatever you do. Live Absolutely. well and move on. Absolutely. If it's going to come back, fine. If it doesn't, and of course, God will be happy with you. Most people don't yes. know this. You know, they just become stagnant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm waiting for you to come back. Smells. <laughs> <laughs> you smell, and it will not come back. That's but the it. moment you are doing well, that will what will draw. Oh, my God. See what I left. Oh, you yes. oh yes. Oh, yeah. People will make sure that they hear the story. Even if they, he doesn't want to hear, they will find a way to get the information. That have you seen this girl? Can you see yeah. what's happening? Yeah. God bless us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, we're yeah. just speaking to somebody out there, just in case you are in that situation, because it's very common, you know. And um, please dust yourself up. Forgive yeah. yourself. Forgive that person. You know, like I said, unforgiveness is like you drinking a poison and wanting the other person to die. That's it. They will not die, honestly. Because people no. that had left... They're investing in themselves. They are doing well. Whatever mm -hmm. way they want to do well, they are doing well, honestly. Mm -hmm. that because they're moving, they've moved on. Mm -hmm. If somebody mm -hmm. has moved on, you don't have to become stagnated and, you know, just, you know, take responsibility. Yes. What, you know, because by your choice, you have gone into that relationship. Yeah. It's by choice. You know, sometimes things happen. You saw the, the, the signs. You didn't take it. You know, you are blaming yourself, you know. Yeah, no, take responsibility of what has happened. You know, blame yourself, cry, do whatever you want to do, feel the mm -hmm. pain, but move mm -hmm. on. Don't mm -hmm. sit down there and say, you know, oh no, no, no. And if he doesn't come, my life. No, no, no. You're you are you were born without him and without yeah, absolutely. her. Absolutely. You know, yes. and you go alone. He he yes. will go alone, she will go alone. So you are not going together unless an accident happened or something. <laughs> you know, God will help us in Jesus. And thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Um at what time did you start working on forgiveness and then rebuilding your life um, after that? It was not easy to forgive. I did not want to forgive. I wanted to go into revenge mode, but not by myself. But in terms of, you know, wishing bad things would happen. I know. people. Do, we but, do that. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Um, for someone who says I was a I'm a believer in Christ and I was reading the word, of course, as you're reading the word, it will be convicting you of some things and you're seeing it and you're praying and the Holy Spirit is telling you, you need to forgive. I'm not asking you. It's a commandment, you know? And when you see that if you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. Like, wow, I'm not perfect myself. So if I, I definitely will be seeking forgiveness of God for something, then I have to forgive. It was also a process. Again, so God used someone to speak to me into into that forgiveness that you need to do this if you don't do this you're going to be held and it's not going to work for you it's going you're, it's just going to be locked up in your heart you're going to be bitter mm. as you as you said you are the one drinking the poison the other person has moved on has not even noticed anything's happening with you you know so that again that was a process it didn't happen in one day it was a continuous process of me asking 
Lord, help me to forgive. Teach me how to forgive. Help me to forgive. Help, mm. Teach me how to forgive. You know, to the point that when I hear the person's name, and I'm, it's not daggers and fire <laughs> and, and things like that. It was a process of forgiveness, which I believe I eventually, I believe I have forgiven. You know, every now and then we talk, and that's because of our son, not because of anything else, really. Um, yes, so it, it was a process asking God to help me to do it. I could not do it on my own. I said, Lord, this is, I know this is what you want me to do. This is what I have to do. Yeah. Help me to do it. Help me to wow, do it. Wow, wow. And that is the truth. It is only God that can help you to do it. Especially humanly speaking. No, like you say, you're wishing evil on the other person. Yeah. You know, forgiveness, we have to. Forgive us our sins as we you for, uh, forgive us our sins as we forgive others mm -hmm. their trespasses. Yes, the yes. Lord will help us. You know, I just want to say that you know uh, you might be bleeding out there. You might be thinking because of this heartbroken, because of abandonment about one thing or the other. All you need to do is to focus on look for that place where you are bleeding, and you know do surgery. You don't do pain management. Do you know some people when you have a, internal bleeding? You cannot manage it with pain. We cannot no. manage it with pain tablet or pain management. No. What do you do? You do surgery. And the surgery you did was forgiveness. Going mm -hmm. back to God and saying, you know what? I can't do this myself. Mm -hmm. Blame yourself. Cry. You know, do anything you want to do. And the first place of um, forgiveness is accepting and knowing, you know, that God will help you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. accepting that, okay, you know what? This has happened. There's nothing I can do about it. You try the best you can at that very particular thing. And another thing, the reason why for forgiveness, again, is this, that just came to my mind, is that people do what they do based on what who they are at that point in time and yeah. the information they have as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people do what they do based on who they are at that point in time and the information that they have. If yeah. you ask them now, they might have something else to say again. Yes. And that is the reason why you forgive because they go, they just, okay, God forgive me. They say, God forgive me. You know, and God <laughs> forgive them. You, you are holding it too. You are holding it, it and you are blocking your own blessing. So yeah. forgive, you must forgive. You know, whatever it is that somebody has done, you know, and the, the unfortunately, unfortunate thing is that God forgives others. Yes. You know, remember somebody who killed somebody. Look yes. at Paul. Yes. You know, he, 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 <laughs> look at Paul. <laughs> you know, he came, God arrested him. He used him mightily, you know, but he was there. He concocted the death of, um, of Stephen, you know. But and as, David as well. Huh? That David that intentionally killed really? someone else's somebody husband. Is, uh, husband. <laughs> took the wife. God forgive. Is the man after God's heart. Yeah. So would you say, you know, if God can forgive that person, so you forgive and just move on Absolutely. and let go. The devil will not hold us back in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Um, can you please describe the overview of the grief process of abandonment, please, for someone out there, you know, to recognize it. Sometimes we have it, you know, some people say, oh, I forgive, oh, I've let go. And I've, there are some process, you know, grieving process, you know, like they have been shattered and, you know, just please tell us. So people will recognize and ask for help. Wow. Okay. I mean, it might be different for different people, but for me, it was um, shock, um, bewilderment, you know, frustration, um, shame that, you know, what did I do? What's happening? Lots of questioning. Why is this happening? What did I, okay. You know, what, 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 what did I do wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Yeah. You know? Um, lots of, as we've mentioned, lots of crying, lots of, you know, just trying to understand why is this going on? Why is this happening? Um, not just you, just trying to seek the answer as to why is this happening? That could be part of, part of your process. But as I said, all these questions, all these emotions, all this grief, I was pouring it out on God. I was pouring it out in prayer. I was pouring it out, you know. Of course, my prayer life was better then, you know. <laughs> when you, are... <laughs> you have a choice, uh, you don't you have, have any choice. That's why I said was against the wall. Absolutely. When somebody was saying, "Oh, I don't think I can be getting up at night to be praying," I said, "I hope God, you know, you will not see the situation where you will be praying all night. You will not even know you didn't sleep." <laughs> you know, 
But I was pouring it a lot out on the Lord, asking, asking, what is this? I was devastated. But at the same time, because I had my son, I had to be careful. You know, I didn't, I don't think I fully got to the point of fully grieving because I was trying to be strong for him. So that it would not affect him or affect, because then, I, you know, it, would, it may it may come out as me being irritable, shouting, taking it out of the child for no reason. He hasn't done Which anything. Most parents do. Uh huh. Most parents you know, do. Of course, has its own uh, effects and Resenting consequences the, the child. child. Yes, and the child becomes an anxious child, cannot do, and he's always, you know, you, you don't you don't want that. You don't, you know. So I, you know, I was it was kind of both for me trying to, you know, walk through the situation, but also ensure that you have this child. You need to, you need to be strong. You need to be strong. How? You know, maybe when he's sleeping, that you know, me and God, I used to call it me and God fighting. More, it was more like me fighting the whole situation. No, me and God is not fighting me. You know, <laughs> so the it's it's almost like it's not a withdrawal. It's not like an addiction. It's it's, it's a loss. It's almost like when you lose someone, when someone it dies. Is. It is. You know, and of course, there's different different yeah. stages of that grief, and people grieve differently. You know, some may you know may eat more, some may not eat at all. You know, some may just go crazy and go wild, yeah. you know, and some, yeah, so it's all, it's it's different. But in all of it, I mean, I, I keep saying it again, you have to hold on to God. You have to hold on to Abba Father. You have to be in him. You have to be all over him. You have to let him love on you, love on him and let him heal you. Let him comfort, let him help you grieve and heal through the process. Not just the physical healing, like I said, the emotional healing is very important, you know, and what I didn't realize through the process, of course, the unforgiveness, you know, again, um, when we were in school of ministry, there was someone that came and his, his calling is to pray and help people free themselves from emotional healing and you have a lot of unforgiveness in your heart not towards the guy but other people who were involved in the situation who to me mm. made it worse than making it that that any better so i didn't even know i thought i dealt with that so that was part of another form of healing for me when he prayed for and i you know the whole thing um lifted off of on me, so I didn't know there was the other unforgiveness that was there as well. So not directly to the person that caused the issue, but also the people around that had built up bitterness and unforgiveness, which I didn't realize. Um, so yeah. Wow, that's the point there. You know, you said uh, sometimes you hold grudges or unforgiveness um, um, with people who are around, kind of contribute those people that contribute to that kind of thing, or people with the people think, who are, are yes. People who yes, are people around the situation, who people who were involved in the situation, seemingly trying to solve the situation, but were making it worse. Okay. By the actions they were taking. Again, I guess yeah. maybe in their own, they were doing what they knew at the time, and also in the shock of it, and their own maybe embarrassment of the situation, wanting to solve it and doing different things. And mm -hmm. I didn't like the way they were handling it because I felt, why are you exposing my matter to all people I don't even talk to? Because it's like you're going everywhere, talking, 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 exposing me. So I didn't know that mm. I had unforgiveness towards the way they had acted in for the situation, apart from wow. the actual person. So that also, you know, that bitterness, that anger towards them, I didn't know was there. Mm. Wow. And that's why David says, search me. Mm. Search me and see all those, you know, hidden sins. So there's yes. there are some that are hidden sin in our hearts. You know, we're holding grudges, resentment, bitterness mm. against other people. Yes. All we need to do always say, we just have Lord forgive us. Yes. You know, creating us a new heart, oh Lord, and renew yeah. a steadfast spirit within Absolutely. us. Mm. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Mm. At what time? You, anyway, you say you had support system. Your family was there, was around yes. you. And my so friends, there are yes. adventures that somebody going through such a thing at this very moment. Please seek help. It's very important. You can't do it That's alone. Cool. You cannot mm -hmm. do it alone. You know, you can't do it alone. Seek help. As you seek God, seek help because you need people around you that will talk to you, you know, your family, your friends. It could be medical help as well. Please up seek for help seek mm -hmm. for help so yes. um at what time did you pick up yourself for love again because one thing i said don't give up on love relationship or yourself and well, you know, some people when something happen to them say never and that's making an inner vow it's very be very, be very careful what you say at yes. the time 
uh, things are happening in your life. Some mm. people will speak negatively. Some people will have inner vow. I will never do that thing again. And, it, you know, it just happened. And by the mm. time you are ready to start again, it will happen. Then you'll be wondering what is what happened? happening, not knowing that you have, you know, have this limiting beliefs or inner vow that you have made. So how did you get over that and love again? Well, <laughs> do I even want to say that I've loved again? <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it, though. I was ready to love again. No, I was not thinking about that. <laughs> I just wanted to get through whatever it was and stand and just be. Love again. I mean, the Lord said I would love again. And I thought, nah, nah. Like you say, don't say those things when you're in the video. I didn't, I was not, I was just like, well, you know, no, 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 no. I don't want to love it. Love, what's that? <laughs> and then also the fact that as a Christian, you hear the thing about, you know, once you, once you divorce, you are not, you may not be able to marry again. So all those things were played on my mind, you know, and then I just thought, you know what, if it happens, it happens. I'm not bothered anyway. What I need to focus on now, I started getting into the path of what is your purpose in this life? What did God create you for? He didn't wow. create you just to come here and just be married. Have children and marry and that is it. Because when you stand before him by yourself, he's going to ask you, what did you do with what I asked you to do? Correct. What did he ask me to do? And in, you know, in trying to seek that, what is my purpose? What is my calling? Which I put off for so long after that, you know, for 10 to 15, you know, 15 years, I, you know, there was a particular area God wanted me to focus on before I eventually started. I was now seeking God, what do you want me to do? And he was telling me what he wanted me to do. And I was like, God, what's my business with this? This is not what, you know, this is not sexy enough, you know, as it is. You know, this is not pretty. I mean, give me a, you know, nice, you know, delicious kind of purpose that, you know, funky and everything. So it was that that is my thing. What is your purpose? As you are walking and focusing on God, he will sort everything out. He said, seek first your, his kingdom and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all other things shall be added unto you. So then eventually that was the mindset I flowed into. What's my purpose? I need to find it. I need to fulfill it. Anything else that will happen, God has said it. His word is forever settled in heaven. It will not return to him void. He has said, I should seek first righteousness. Let's do this. So I started focusing more on what am I supposed to be doing? I don't want to get to say, ah, what am I supposed to be doing? What did I do? Was I supposed to be doing this? So that's what I started focusing. I really, I just thought if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I wasn't thinking about it really. Wow. I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for speaking the truth. The Lord will bless you Amen. and he will honor you in Jesus name. Amen. I just want to use this opportunity to people out there. Don't give up on love or relationship because God himself is love. You know, yes. you made mention of it as a Christian. Okay. Because the man has walked out. The, is, is, there's a place in the Bible that says, if the unbelieving man walks out, you are mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. You are free. Mm -hmm. And if one thing I tell people, the more, the more you have settled with God, not all preacher will believe this, you know, the moment you settle with God, it's you. You have a personal business with God. It was made mention of David earlier on. Did, mm -hmm. David did outrageous things. But God forgave him. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, we are all human. If Absolutely. you want to remarry and there's the man that walked out of the marriage and you waited, you did everything, you can't be like that forever. Mm -hmm. Everybody should say what will suit them. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As far as you have, you know, a relationship with God and you are set to you have peace. I'll say go ahead. Mm. Just put on that hope. Yeah, yes, one day I'll meet my boas. Yes. And it will surely happen. It will surely happen. And not because something has happened to you, you let go. Some people you see them, the moment you see them, you know they have problem. Yes, absolutely. You know, <laughs> physically, emotionally, yes, they will not yes, smile exactly. anymore. They will not, you know, they will not take care of themselves. Please, sisters or brothers, even some men too. I've met yes. some men. If you look at them because their husband, wife have left them, oh my God. I say, can it might go through this? <laughs> you know, they just go into that spiral, something, yes. boom, on the ground. Yes. No. I go into depression, yes. Of course, people go into depression. People yes. end up in mental um, uh, in mental hospitals and everything yes. because of this. But like you said, what would you tell God when you say God? Because you have that's not your purpose. It's part 
of the journey of life, the thing yes. you have to do. But that's not your pop. I mean, yes, some people they find purpose in marriages, but the thing that you have gone through as well, God wants to use that to bring people to the kingdom of God. Yes. Who absolutely. knows for such a time as this that mm -hmm. that happened for such a time as this, so that mm -hmm. you'll be able to console other people that are going through it now. You tell them, yes. listen, you know, I know what you are going through. Mm -hmm. That could and you be know the reason why you went through what you went through. People and you know that happened. That way. Yeah, that happened because I had a friend who went through, you know, a similar thing, but you know, slightly different, but similar. And I was able to, you know, minister to her as it were, for because I had already been there. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, um, and I was able to do that because I understood exactly what she was going through yeah. I understood uh, what he was going through you know so I was able and that's the whole point for us to be able to minister out of compassion out of empathy to the person that is going through and be there for them yeah and that is the truth and that is the truth you know and they become your sheep they hear your voice they hear you they understand what you are saying it's just like a prostitute on the street and you've been a prostitute before and you tell her say listen I've been in this before this was what happened God saved me because of you Mm. Mm. your divorce it does, it does, that's not the end of life don't think about the you know this stigma or the stigmatization and everything no mm. do what god wants you to do and be okay. proud of who you are Absolutely. work on your purpose like you said you put all your strength into your purpose i want god to say you know well done you faithful yes. and good servant I think yes. I, I wish that on you as well on myself. Amen. You know, Amen. Try and walk on your purpose. That's the most important thing to walk yes. in the purpose of God for your life. One Absolutely. question I usually ask everybody that comes onto this show is this looking back now, what is one mistake that you made that you want us to learn from? One mistake that I that I made um that I want to learn from that it is possible to do the right thing at the wrong time. Uh or it say the right thing at the wrong time. To do the time. right thing. At, at the, the wrong time. time. Yes. Again, this is where it's important to be led by God in what you're doing. It may feel right to you, but is it the is it you know is it the right time? Are you supposed to do that at, the, at this time? Um, I got a scholarship to do a, a master's course, and uh, I wanted I was asked to talk about it and so on and so forth, but it was not necessarily the right time for me to talk about it because the moment I did that, there was a lot of uh, attack. And you know, and it was like we went. It was not the time for you to to say. You should have waited until you finished that course completely. I don't. I was almost finished. I hadn't finished, but I should have waited. And there was a, a, another instance too. I said something. I I I. What's the word? I wouldn't say it was a secret. I said something to my parents, and it was the. I thought I was doing the right thing because I was now a Christian, but it was the wrong time. So you can do the right thing at the wrong time. Yeah, so and that is the truth. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's one prayer I pray for myself and my children. I say, may they not be at the right place at the wrong time, at the wrong place at the right time. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you're very right. So we have to be time. Time is everything. And the most important thing is that we ask God first, yes. Lord, what should I do about this? Should I go on? When you have that con con um, that, um, that peace mm -hmm. in you, and God says, go ahead, you will not be disappointed, you will not be ashamed. Yes, I mean, one one thing I noticed when you're reading the Old Testament, especially when you're reading kings and so on, the ones who were, you know, were good kings anyway, before they would do anything, they would ask, go and inquire of the Lord, shall we do this, shall we not do this? Hmm. And we, a lot of us, we move without doing that. And even if we ask, we're not patient enough to wait for the answer. I'm, 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 I'm one. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. <laughs> Who well, as a minister? Well, because I'm a, one thing because I'm a Syria entrepreneur because I've got so many talents. Glory be to God. Yes. You know, I think I can just do this. I do this. I do this. I move away from me. I go to this. I because I can do it. God has given me the strength to do it. Glory be to God. So when it's not working, and God will always bring me back, pull me back. Yes. I was in business for a very long time. When He told me He wanted me to go somewhere else, but because I love business, and you know, said no, 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 I can't do this. Believe me, that shop was closed. And by prayer, it's not even me. People were praying, people that never knew me. They, they later they came and said, Listen, I went home and I spoke to God and said, No, 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 this can't happen. They opened it temporarily yes. and it was closed again. Again. I knew it was God that was working here. Yeah. I just want to tell you that, you know, 
this is it. It's time for you to move on. And, you know, because we don't want to hear, you know, mm -hmm. most people are like that. God will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate you for coming, you know, to speak to us. And I pray that what you have shared today will be a blessing to somebody out there. It will change mm -hmm. lives and will bring life to the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And I say your testimony with the blood of Jesus. Amen. You know, amen. this testimony is for a reason and it's for yes. a purpose. It's for somebody to be saved into the kingdom of God. I also mm -hmm. want to, you know, just encourage somebody out there, just in case you're going through, you know, please depend on God. Rest and show that the Lord that have been with you from the beginning will see you through. Yes. Like our sister said, invest in yourself. Rediscover who you are. There is a reason why God has created you. Work on that. Become the best version of God for your life. Stop mm -hmm. languishing, but flourish. Flourishing and growing is what God created you to be. You know, not because of your partner, not because of your husband, not because of your wife. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why God created you. And you have to fulfill that. So I just want to say, work on your thoughts. Work on your feelings. Because when you change your thoughts, your feelings will change. We should take to action. And your action becomes your reality. So it's what, mm -hmm. and that's why the Bible said, meditate on these things. Things that are good, things that are noble, things of good report. Meditate yes. on it. The moment you start meditating on the word of God, the right thing, believe me, your life will change. Yes, like absolutely. I said earlier on, the best revenge, you know, is to be successful, yes. live a better life, and move on. Let go and let God. The Lord yes. bless you. And the yes. Lord bless you, viewers, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Please share this Thank video. Thank you for having me. Maybe a blessing you. to other people, please. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. MCB TV channel Karo Babalola. I'll see you next week. Till then, remain blessed.